Thank you, Jat. And what I want to take a look at with this game is the fact that it was a slow game. And yeah. in these slow-paced games, we're given the opportunity to see how team decision-making plays a large role in wins and losses over individual mechanics and, like, lane leads and things right, like that. of course. And I do want to say that, like, individual skill does have a place in League of Legends, and the reason Team Coast is in 10th place right now is not because their individual skill is so much worse than Cloud9. They're, they're close. The problem is that, yes, the shot calling, uh, what, like, the fact that everyone on C9 knows what to do kind of at all times is actually really important in a game of League of Legends, especially where it slows down. Strategic play makes the most sense. Right, so I do want to pull up our replay for this segment. We're going to get that up on the screen. And basically... This isn't, you know, our normal team fight replay where you're nope. going to see a bunch of action, and but yet it is the decider of the game. Right. This was when the game was like, oh my god, it's 4,000 gold lead. This is probably going to be over if C9 plays like this. So vision control is nice, and vision control is important, but what's more important than that is actually minion wave control. I want you guys to look at the minimap primarily. So you got Maokai over here in the top lane, and notice how far past the river he is. He is well past, so he is pressuring the turret right now, right this second. The mid lane, basically three members of C9. Braum's kind of close by, he can rejoin them, whatever. Mid lane's getting pressured because range champions, AD carries pressure turrets down. And then High is down here in the long lane because, well, Maokai can TP into Dragon, so he's on the other side of the map. And then Zed is just here because he doesn't have teleport. Like, that's basically the reason. He's the same champion. So let's roll the clip, and you're going to see what happens because these turrets are under pressure. And Coast think, oh, we've got vision control. Oh, you know, we can make this play. We've got a ward over the wall. We're here. We've got some sweepers. We can take a Dragon. But they didn't get their minion waves under control. So Sneaky and Medius are knocking down the mid lane. No one's reacting. Balls of the top lane, knocking down the turret. Chris left bot and let High go push if he wants to. Oh look, the turret's under pressure, and the team's like, oh crap, oh crap, mid's getting hit, guys, we gotta chase Sneaky. Yep, but they forgot one. High's down bottom. There's no one TPing in for balls. Here's turret number two right there. They've still forgot High is bottom, by the way. That turret's dead. Now Impaler runs over. Now Graves and Jarvan are like, guys, bot lane's getting hit. Oh crap, right, High's there the whole yep. time. And, and they're not having the foresight. And this is not necessarily shot calling. It can be if you are the best player ever and you're watching all three lanes at all times and micromanaging your team like you're playing StarCraft. You could do that, but that's silly. You shouldn't be having to do this. This is not High's job. It's not Lemon's job. It's no one's job. It's the fact that everyone on Cloud9 is like, oh, okay, they're dragging. Cool, I can push my turret in. Exactly. Right? And that's the same thing should be for MASH. Same thing for B for Impaler. Same thing should be for Chris is, hey, keep your darn lane under control and don't rotate out and give away a free turret. Yep, one, two, three turrets just like that in 15 seconds. And you're not afraid to give up those early dragons sure. when you can effectively cover the, st the st statistical gain of the dragon exactly. with golden items. Yeah, and that's the thing is you can talk about the value of dragon one in gold value and it's worth less than a turret early game. Super late on the game when you've got like a 600 AP Cassiopeia, okay, sure, it's probably worth more than an outer turret getting yeah. Dragon 1, let her carry your game for you with that buff. But Dragon 2 especially has zero combat effectiveness. There are actually so few games where you actually poke down a turret. You kill turrets because you out-rotate or because you chunk them out and push like that. Yeah, you want to fight prior. Exactly. Very, very rarely does Dragon 2 actually have an impact on the game whatsoever. The game wasn't shaping up as this big control fest where Dragon 5 was going to be a thing. There was just no reason to Dragon. Coast made the wrong call. No one kept up with their minion waves. And hey, look, C9 got three turrets and... 2,000 gold for it, and shockingly, they're winning now. Yeah, it's really incredible how elementary and minor things like that can affect a game of League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Well, we are going to go AFK for three and a half, but when we return, Team 8 will look for a rematch revenge when they face off against Team Impulse. We'll be right back. We're going to go tee up our first match. That is Team Coast versus Cloud9. Chris is coming in from the top. His Gnar is just wearing out, but they're able to take down Lennon. That's first blood now, 12 and a half minutes in. Taylor goes in, flashes out to collect the team, but nobody can start attacking. Balls takes down and Taylor. They are gonna go flying in. It's not gonna be mash me appropriate or in range for this fight. They are just completely demolishing Coast inside their base. Nicely done, Cloud9 takes down Coast. 